Welcome to This Woman Can, the women's leadership podcast and your source of information related to women's leadership, female entrepreneurship, personal success and career advancement. I'm your host, Janice Sutherland, executive coach, leadership development expert and the author of This Woman Can, the no bullshit guide for women who lead. And now this week's episode. Hey everybody and welcome to this week's edition of This Woman Can. Now I'm delighted because it's my first episode of Ask Janice. Now this is where you get the opportunity to ask me any question pertaining to your career, to your leadership goals or just life in general. And I had a great question this week, a great question for Maria, Maria in Trinidad, who sent me the sent me the question, Janice, it's coming up to the holidays and I love the Christmas holidays. I love the Christmas period, but I always find myself so exhausted because I'm doing everything for everybody else apart from me. How can I manage to survive the holidays? Now, thanks, Maria. Thanks, Maria. That was a great question. And I know what it's like. I remember what it's like, especially when you have children, you have the family. It's a time for everybody to get together. It's a time for you to celebrate, enjoy, you know, just have a good time. But often, if I remember, sometimes it wasn't always a good time because the pressure was always on, especially if you're the host, you're the host to throw the best party, to make sure the kids had a fantastic experience, to make everything, make sure everything went well. And being women, we naturally want the best, the best for the, for the family, the best for those around us, and we want it to be perfect. So, but but in but in the but in the process, we often end up making ourselves a little bit miserable, being a bit disappointed because maybe it just wasn't the way we thought things would go. And to be quite honest, we're exhausted. So I'm going to give you um, a few ways that you can. Um, survive the holidays. That's probably the best thing to do is to survive the Christmas survive the Christmas holidays. Just a few tips here. Now, the first thing I want you to do is really either maintain the routine you normally have or develop a, a new routine, preferably in the morning. Make some time for you. Make a little bit of space, whether that's just 30 minutes grabbing a coffee, read a book, taking a walk, listen to a podcast, listen to some music. Take a few, take a few moments, a little bit of time just for yourself, your me time, fill yourself in the morning just to kind of get away from a thing to, to, to set, to create the right minds, create the right, right mindset. So that's, so that's my first, my first piece, first, first tip. The second thing is, it is almost around this time now we start getting bombarded with even more. We get bombarded with adverts. We get bombarded with sales. We've just had Thanksgiving. So we've got the cyber sales, the Black Friday. We've got people wanting to tell us more about everything going on. And a lot of information's often bombarded us at, 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 all, direct, at all directions. So really be careful about what you're consuming and what's taking up, what's sapping your energy. You know, sometimes at work that other people are flapping because they want to get their Christmas period quite right or they want things perfect. There's a Christmas party coming up. They want to have that perfect. But don't let it sap your energy. Don't let it drain you. Just be careful of to what you consume in, in, in your surroundings or mentally and physically, um, what you consume and really Guard your energy fiercely. The third thing is, which I know a lot of us really, really struggle struggle with, is being able to say no. Now, especially being able to say no to things that really rob our time or rob a lot of energy from us, so suck the whole life out of us. But what I want you to think about is, that it, instead of trying to say, first of all, saying, what's going to happen if I say no? Think about what's going to happen if you say yes. What will be the impact on you? What will you have to do differently? What would you have to give up? You know, what would it look like if you if it, it didn't come to fruition when you said yes, that you just didn't have the time, the strength, the energy to actually get to, to actually pull it, pull it off the way you think it should be pulled off? You will be the one ending up mes- miserable. 
So for me, no is a complete sentence and stand by it. If you really can't do it, it's something that's not on your agenda that you just don't want to do that. You know, it's like, if I do this, I've got to give up something else. Say no, politely say no, say thank you for thinking of me. But, you know, I've got a lot of things I want to do right now. It's best to give it to somebody who, you know, you are somebody who's going to be able to kind of step up to the plate or have the time and energy to do it. So just remember to just remember that no is a complete sentence. Now, following that, other things I want you to have a, have a think about, as I said, about keeping your, your regular routine, saying no, be realistic about the period and don't look for the perfect holiday. If it's going to go wrong, we all know it's going to go wrong, but we all have our idealized version of what we think the holiday should be like. And I know I was very guilty of this because if it wasn't actually picture card perfect or everything wasn't in place, something went wrong, I was incredibly disappointed. It, it almost, you know, one could almost wreck that whole day. So be realistic and know that things are going to happen, that they're, they're out of your control. Things are going to go wrong. You can't, you know, at the end of the day, you see it as being perfect. You see it as being the perfect day. But the people you're throwing it for, the kids, the family, they don't know something's gone wrong. They're just having a good time. So take a leaf out of their book and try not to expect the, 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 per, the, the ideal holiday. The next thing to do is stay connected. Make sure you spend some time, leave some time to really spend time with those who matter to you, who will value, value you. If they don't live close by, my family live overseas. So I don't have the time to, I don't really have the opportunity all the time to visit them, but I do make time to make sure I have a Skype call, a WhatsApp call, a Zoom call, something that gets me connected with them. Some time where it's just us. Yeah, I mean, technology is a fantastic thing now. It really allows us to stay connected. So, you know, if I want to talk to them, if I want to talk to them, I make the time to talk to them. And it really gives me a, a good grounding, you know. It makes me realize, well, actually, yeah, there's more to life than having this perfect picture card, picture card Christmas period, Christmas period. And then I want you to throw guilt out of the window. Do not be guilty. Stop putting unreasonable pressure on yourself to be happy, to have this facade, the rejoice, or even to enjoy the holidays. Don't overanalyze your interactions with others. Just give yourself a break. You know, it just it, it, you're supposed to enjoy this period too. So give yourself a break when it comes to that. And focus on what's happening today, not yesterday. Don't look at the past. This is what's happening right now. You know, when you're with the family sometimes, it makes us very nostalgic. And sometimes the nostalgia could be not always positive. You know, there could be something that happened in our past, you know, past relationships, things that went wrong. And you can find yourself reverting to maybe childhood patterns about, you know, with family members uh, and things that went wrong and mulling and what ifs, buts and maybes. So, but it's, you know, it's not necessary to play that same role. You know, focus on what it is, focus on what's happening right now, not what's happened in the past. You're, you're, you're creating this, this moment for the people around you. Live the moment with, live the moment with them. And if it all gets too much, don't be afraid to ask for help. You know, we're, we are our own worst enemies. We believe we have to do everything ourselves. It can't be done right if we don't do it. We, nobody else knows what we want. Nobody else can do it the way we do it. And we run ourselves ragged into the ground. You know, so be mindful. Ask for help. If you've got the family, if you've got family around you, you know, ask and, you do, and you're and you responsible for the Christmas dinner, ask them to cook a particular dish. Ask them to come around and help you a little bit more. Ask the kids to participate. Get your husband to do something. It is okay to ask. Listen to me. It's okay to have help. It's okay to ask for help from family and friends. And whether that's for decorating, shopping, cooking, or just a shoulder to lean on or, or somebody's ear to bend, it really is okay. And lastly, I want to say the last thing for me for here is remember you. Remember you in this whole process be, and be good to yourself. If you're feeling a little down or if it's getting all a little bit on top and, you know, it's just dragging you down, 
Take some time out to do what feels good for you and what you want to do. And again, it could, like I said, just like the morning, it could be as simple as taking a walk, spending time alone, grabbing a coffee down the coffee shop. If that's what you want to do. Remember, this is your holiday time too. And you have to be there for yourself, just like you try to be there for everybody else. It only comes around for once a year, these holiday period. And, and we sometimes think it lasts for weeks. But if you follow the tips that um, I provided here, you might just find this year to be more joyful and much less stressful. So I hope you found that really, informa really inf informative. Um, it's going to be a busy time of year. And I really do appreciate that. So I hope you found those tips to be useful. And all I want to say is thank you so much for listening, connecting. Please have a wonderful week wherever you are in the world. And let's stay connected on Facebook or Instagram, because that's where I'll let you know about all the great things that are coming for 2019. I have some fantastic things planned, some great things planned. Um, and I want to stay connected outside these podcasts. So let's do that. And also, if you do me a fantastic favor by rating, reviewing on iTunes, it takes a couple of moments. I really would appreciate it. It's how I can get the word out to other women just like yourself. So remember, until next time, if I can, you can, this woman can, have a fantastic week. You've been listening to the This Woman Can podcast, brought to you by This Woman Can, the no bullshit guide for women who lead, available on Amazon and Kindle. For more information about the training and consulting services offered for women who lead, including one-on-one -on -one executive coaching and group masterminds, visit thiswomancan.coach.